Hello, my name is Nick. I'm a service technician here at the Inverter Service Center, and today we're going to be talking about the System Control Panel, also known as the SCP, made by Xantrex. So we'll be going over the system settings in the SCP today, and we'll also be going over before that the proper way of installing the terminators and the network cables. This seems to be an issue with a lot of first-time installers. So if you guys are ready, let's dive on in. Okay guys, like as I told you, I'm going to show you guys the proper way first of hooking up your network cable and your um, terminator into the Xantrex unit. Um, you want to look at the front of the unit. It's going to tell you on the front, Zambus interface and stacking. We're not going to worry about stacking. This is a feature if you were to stack two units together. Um, this is the stacking port on how those two units are going to communicate. Um, but for the majority of you guys, you guys will just be using this Zambus interface, these two ports right here. So what you'll do is you'll take your terminator and you'll plug it into one port, and it doesn't matter which port, and you will take your network cable that is going to your SCP and you will plug it into the second port. All right, you need to have the terminator in or the unit will not function correctly. All right guys, so this is what the back of your SCP is going to look like. You have two Zambus interface ports. We are going to put a terminator in one of those Zambus interface ports. Alrighty. And again, it doesn't matter which port you plug it into, just as long as you have it plugged into one of them. And then the other thing we're going to plug in is our network cable, which is going to the inverter. So we're going to go ahead and plug that one in. Now with both the network cable and the terminator in the SCP and the network cable and the terminator in the unit, this should function properly. All we need to do is add the DC power and add our AC input and outputs and we're good to go. Alright guys, so this is the Xantrek system control panel. This is the main screen for it and today we're going to be talking about the system settings. So we'll go ahead and hit enter on that. The first line item we have is invert. Go ahead and hit enter on that and if you hit up or down you can enable the inverter. So we've turned the inverter on, hit enter again, hit up or down and we can disable the inverter. The second line item we'll talk about is AC charge. It's the same concept as that first line item with invert except with the charger. So if I were to be charging I can hit enable. Right now the, the uh, inverter would be pushing current into the batteries, charging the batteries up. I go and click it again, click disable. Now that's turned the charger off and we are no longer charging the batteries. System mode. We have the system mode here. If you click enter on this, you'll have operating. If you hit up or down on the arrows here, it'll put you in standby. Okay, so just to let you know, if you are in standby with system mode, it is going to turn off the AC charge and it's also going to turn off the inverter. So you'll no longer be charging your batteries or you'll no longer be inverting power depending if you're plugged in or not. Okay, And then you can put it back to operating and then both these settings will be back into the enabled position. Keep this in mind, um, sometimes this accidentally gets hit and then people go to try to turn their inverter on and they're like, why is my inverter not working? Why do I not have power to my receptacles? Look at your system mode and just make sure that's in operating. If it's in standby, you're not going to have power going to those receptacles. Cascading. Cascading is a cool feature they added in. Um, it's where if you were to stack two units, if you stack um, inverters, um, you have a master, what's called a master, and you have what's called a slave. You can have multiple slaves. Um, we're not going to go too deep down this rabbit hole, but <clears throat> what it does is it takes the master settings and just copies them over to the slave. So you don't have to go and program two inverters, you just have to program one. But you have to have that enabled for that setting to work. If you have it disabled, it's not going to work. You'll have to go program two inverters. The next thing we have is connection names. Um, this is pretty simple. You can go in here and you can name your house batteries, you can name your start batteries, generator, and AC loads. It's pretty self-explanatory on this. Function, if I haven't said it already, that's your back button. Um, 
we'll go down to view fault list. So if you have any faults, whether it be like a welded relay fault or an internal short fault, something like that, you can go in here and actually read that in your fault list and it'll give you the code and you go in your manual and you look it up. Um, right now we don't have any faults with the unit. Back again. Next we have warning list, same idea. Um, the difference between a fault and a warning, a fault will disengage the inverter. Um, if it's inverting or charging, it'll stop the inverter from doing either if a fault pops up. Warning it won't, it'll just flash it up on your screen. Um, it's going to let the inverter keep inverting, but it's going to make you aware of there's a possible situation arising. So um, keep that in mind. The next is clear all faults and warnings, so if you know you had a fault and you figured out the issue or you had a warning and you figured out the issue whether it be a low battery what have you um, and you just want to get rid of that fault you just go here and click clear all faults and warnings and it will get rid of the faults and warnings for you we have device view device info so we'll go ahead and click that um, what it's going to tell you is it's going to tell you what model inverter you have you right here we have a freedom sw 3012 a 3000 watt 12 volt unit um, it's going to tell you the model number the 815-3012, the serial number, and what software we're running on it. And that's it for the first section of the system settings.